What should be done? Night before the counteroffensive. Number three. Back to the graduates. What are they up to? Oh, they're testing to see who killed those uh those samples, the captured titans. This society, you just can't win. There's just always something going on. There's no no break. If the titans don't kill you, the bureaucracy will. This is the bureaucracy arc of the show. <laughs> bureaucracy and politics. Is that Jean looking at him? John? John. John is definitely joining, well, he's not joining the military police. It's probably a good thing. That's reasonable. It's cool that out of all the people that could have affected that it was John who was sort of the most reluctant in the first place. But it makes sense because I think that sometimes the things that you're most afraid of are probably things that on some level you realize you most have to do. Like I think a lot of the cadets in that room, they weren't really aware of what they were signing up for. I mean, everybody has their own motivations, but it seems like there are probably a lot of people who look at things on a superficial level and sort of, sort of just go with the flow. And John is not that kind of person. Like he's very introspective. And so I feel like his desire to join the military police is based partly on an understanding of what's at stake and also what kind of responsibility that is. And so it's not a huge surprise that someone like Aaron could come in and sort of blast through those walls. And it's one of those things where like, if you're really trying hard not to look at something, you can only maintain that for so long until someone comes through and breaks through the cracks and then it sort of seeps in and then gradually you kind of come to it on your own. You know, like he didn't agree with Aaron at first, it's something he's come to just through like sitting with it and also his experiences. But what I hope for John is that this means he's going to approach it in a deeper, more understanding way. I'm excited for his character because he seems like one of the deeper ones out of the characters in the show. Oh no, it's the ghost of Marco. ジャンは強い人ではないから。弱い人の気持ちがよく理解できる。それでいて現状を正しく認識することにたけているから。今何をすべきか明確にわかるだろう。いや、there's no hiding from his responsibility anymore. Marco's backhanded compliment was right. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's exciting. And I bet a bunch of people will follow him. Connie's gonna go too. You gotta do it, Connie. Nah. Quit fooling yourself. Any, I feel like, has one of the most reasonable objections to it. Like, a lot of the characters who want to join the military police, they are doing it out of a desire for safety and comfort. But I feel like Annie's objection to it the fact that she doesn't want to follow other people's commands, to me, that's sort of valid because it's one thing to want to help humanity and to help society. It's another thing to put your life at the mercy of someone else. And we've seen that some of these military members are not the sharpest or the most well-rested. So that is sort of a thing. I feel like I would have similar thoughts in this situation. Like, I don't want to shy away from my responsibility. I don't want to hide in comfort while other people are suffering for me. But I feel like the answer for me wouldn't be to put my trust in these commanders you know there must be other things that you can do that doesn't mean military police is the right option either and i guess like her options are sort of limited because she's already a soldier and so those are sort of her routes but not wanting to submit yourself to command i feel like is not totally unreasonable <laughs> who isn't joining <laughs> he's not weak how dare you um <laughs> don't know about that I don't think that's it. That's not what she expressed earlier on. Huh? Uh -huh. He got early access. Yeah, I feel like in his case, he just couldn't ignore it anymore. He was trying not to take anyone's advice. Hey. You're telling everyone about the basement? Yeah. 
I'm still not sure exactly how he knows all this. Right, my feeling as well. Yeah, he probably does. Is he trying to test to see who has knowledge? That was a great speech, but it was sort of unnecessary because he had me at my name is Erwin Smith. Is there a connection between what he's doing now? Sort of testing the audience and the death of the two Titan samples. Tell him straight. Right. That's kind of awkward that they vote with their feet. He has to, though. Nah, a lot of them will. <laughs> yeah, it's different when it's real. <laughs> That's dance. Damn. Connie's one of the characters I'm most impressed with. He seems the most surprising to make this decision. Get out. Haha. <laughs> 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 Connie. Yeah, I feel like he really means that too. One thing they've done such a great job of is like establishing what an honor this is. So, okay, there's more immediate danger. But, I mean, there's danger everywhere. If you join the garrison, there's a good chance you die in the walls. If you join the military police, there's a good chance you die from bureaucracy. But not everyone gets to live this kind of life. You know, not everyone gets to live under someone like Erwin. And almost no one ever in their lives will ever get to participate in something so important and so potentially beneficial as retaking Wal Maria. And I think it speaks really well to Erwin's leadership that he conveys that feeling. Like, he conveys the feeling, at least to me as a viewer, <laughs> not risking my own life, that it's a blessing to be here. It's a gift. And in a way, it's good that a lot of people remove themselves from that. I mean, I think that's part of what makes it so special and so elite. There's only room for people like this who understand the value of it and who are truly courageous enough to, like, risk their own lives in a month, you know? So for me, it's inspiring on multiple levels because I'm inspired by, like, the characters who are clearly aware of the risks, like, they're not lying to themselves, and are terrified but still hold their ground and see the, see the potential, see the value. And on the other side of that, I'm inspired by Erwin for creating that kind of environment because all of this is on his shoulders. Like, all the fear that they're facing, he has that too. Plus, he's responsible for their lives. He lets them know that he can see that and that he cares. For me, as a viewer, he's already won my loyalty. You know what I mean? そこにエレンイエーガーの配置が示されていないことだった。They yeah, there are other enemies. I mean, it's not just the Titans. <laughs> she looks so deprived. Kind of. A little bit, be honest. Except for Annie. John's there. Very dramatic. That's how you put on a cape, or whatever this is. Glamour shot. That was a nice tribute to Marco, and... Yeah, I mean, he's 100% right. Like, that was kind of brutal having him die off screen. I'm wondering what Aaron and John's relationship 
will be from now on. Because now they're more aligned, right? But they're still very different in the way they approach things. So I could see that still being a problem. And also John has a crush on Mikasa, right? <laughs> Hopefully he does better than her last love interest, Ian. I'm also thinking that his friends joining is a good thing for Aaron because it might mellow him out a little bit. A bunch of them are probably there specifically for him or because of his influence. If Aaron understands that, I feel like that gives him a greater responsibility than him just joining the Survey Corps to kill. In some ways, this feels like them placing faith in him. And my view of Aaron is that he's really passionate, but he's not conscientious enough. And he's a little bit of a zealot. And so I think it would be really cool to see him mellow out in that way and sort of like spread his focus out beyond just rage and killing to community, camaraderie, friendship, his adopted sister, right? <laughs> ミカサを殺そうとしたらしいな。それは一体どういうことだ。違う。エレンは灰を叩こうとして。ハンスフェイス。俺たちと人類の命がこいつにかかってる。俺たちはマルコのように。エレンが知らないうちに死ぬよ